What's up, everybody? Welcome back in. We are back on the YSL trial for the last couple of days. The cross examination of Woody have been going on by multiple defense attorneys asking different questions in different ways, but he seems like a lot more of a friendly witness to the defense, giving them what they need than when compared to the prosecutor. So in today's video, we're going to watch just a little bit of the end of his direct examination, and then we're going to dig into cross and see what did Woody prove? So right off the bat, Dad, we're going to start with the end of direct, which gives us a little vibe of how direct went, and then we will jump into some clips from Cross. Anything you want to say about this clip before we play it? No, but it's 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 kind of a a microcosm. I mean, there were you know there were days Cross. I mean, excuse me, Cross. There were days direct examining, although they could lead because he was declared a hostile witness, but uh, they went for hours. And this just shows basically what worth it had to the prosecution. Didn't you ask the judge? You turned around and you asked, sir. Nothing I said could be used against me, right? And you oh, oh okay. Okay. And isn't it true that under this immunity agreement, you were told that you could be charged with perjury? You said I could be charged with who? Perjury. I don't even know what perjury is. Okay. Were you told also in this immunity agreement that you could be charged if you committed false swearing? I was told... I asked specifically so I can understand. I asked you, I said, uh, what, what, what happened Would y'all lock me up? Y'all told me two things I go to jail for. If I plead the fifth, and if I say that I had uh, committed a crime that I didn't do. Okay. So I don't know what perjury means. I don't, I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm afraid for my life. And I told y'all that. I told it to my lawyer. I tell it to the judge. I tell it to everybody. Y'all got me up here. I don't know what's going on. And like I said, from, for the crimes that y'all charged me with, I went to jail. I did all my time for it. Y'all still bring me in here. I feel like I'm, I'm still in, I'm almost, I'm, I'm on trial at this point. I'm going to jail because I don't, I don't know. Y'all got me up here asking me questions. I don't know how to answer these questions. Y'all want me to be a witness to something I don't know nothing about. Isn't true that even with the immunity agreement, you did not want to testify? Can you explain it? Sure. Even when you were given immunity, you did not want to testify. If, no, I, and I still don't want to testify. And isn't it true that you feel that you were pressured by the state to testify? I feel like I, I was pressured by both sides, the state and the defense. Okay. And isn't it true that you? Why is she asking him that? Like, don't you feel like you were pressured by the state? It's like, why are you asking him that? Told me in front of these jurors a couple weeks ago, you felt pressured to testify. And I still, right now, I, I feel pressured to testify because it's not, it's not like I'm up here to be to to. It's not. I can't sit here and tell y'all. I can't sit here and tell y'all nothing. I don't. I don't. I don't know what y'all want me. I don't know what y'all looking for. I didn't. I didn't see nobody kill nobody. I didn't see nobody rob nobody. I didn't see none of these boys do anything. I, I did some stupid things. I got caught for the stupid things that I was doing. And I, I just went from there. Like, I didn't. And then y'all got me up here. And I told y'all for y'all put me up here. Y'all can't talk to me on like a Tuesday or something. And it, you can't talk to me in the streets. And I told you, like, I lied. And I told you that. And then y'all still brought me in here. Isn't it true that you did not want to testify because you don't want to be deal with the reality of being labeled a snitch? Um, uh, Miss, Miss, Miss Hilton, I was being labeled a snitch way before I had to come to trial when y'all linked that video out to the social media. So the world look at me as a snitch, no matter what goes on to this day. But me coming here, like I have put my faith in God's hands. And I come here and I let it be known. I guess got no choice but to be letting known to y'all now that I have told y'all time after time that I don't lie. And a snitch is someone who actually tells the truth, correct? This means like, I mean, like, I feel like I got the world on my back now. You ask me these questions, like, I don't know, man. Like, y'all draining me. I mean, like, for real. It's a different if I sat here and seen somebody commit a crime. And then I saw them with my own eyes do this. And then I get in here and say, I didn't see them do that. Y'all want me to sit here and say, oh, the, the, the stories that I have put on other people's. And, and I didn't. Like, I, I, I would not do that. Like, it, and, and, and Lord knows I want to be with my family and my kids. But if y'all going to put me back in jail because I won't, I won't sit right here and tell y'all what y'all believe to be whatever y'all want me to say. Like, I, just, I mean, I don't want to go to jail. But, man, at this point, I don't. Man, y'all got me, man. I don't know, man. I can't sleep at night. Like, I'm. I tell you, y'all hold me in jail. Don't feed me. Don't give me water. Like, I, I just don't know. Like, every time I walk in this door, I, I just I pray and hope I get, walk back out this door. I just want to be left alone. I pay for my punishment. And I don't told y'all for y'all put me right here in this seat. Time after time, I told Judge Glanville in his office. I don't told everybody. I can tell. And I'm telling you to your face. I know you don't have anything to do with you. You're doing your job. But I'm, I'm, I've been nice to you, and I've been telling you that you, you can't put me up here. And, and, and I told you, I done made it up. Okay. It's a difference if I seen one of these guys actually do something and you ask me, did they do it? 
You, if you ask me, did they do something that I actually saw them do? And I would tell you, yeah, I saw him do that. Yeah, I was with him when he did that. But this is not the case. And you just told police what the Mickey I told you, correct? I told the police anything to get them off of me. I was going through a phrase. People were shooting at me while I had my kid. And my only priority was by any means necessary to protect them with my whole fucking life. Just take a minute because they drive me crazy. Yeah, take a minute, take a breath. Keep telling you, keep telling no, you. Stay here. Come here. Stay on the stand. Take some breaths. Calm down. And once he finishes his breath, Your Honor, stay, um, we conclude our questioning, Your Honor. Right, well, are, do you have any more questions? No. Okay. All right. Now, All right. Key, key points here. Number one, she can't complain now when they cross examine him about their conversation, his conversations with that prosecutor, because she went into those conversations saying, you know, you have immunity, you know, well, I don't know what you told me, you told me this. So we have a prosecutor making herself a witness by asking those questions and the responses that he gave, all having to do with that secret ex parte meeting. So that door has been opened now and the prosecutors opened that door. I think the judge has already ruled that they can get into that. Yes, so, they can. Yeah. And so she went and, and preemptively got into it. And so we know now that she is going to be, well, she's not going to be called as a witness, but she's going to be a person whose name is going to come up a lot during cross-examination in, in the future. And the other thing that he talked about, and, and he said it quickly, you release the tapes. Those interview tapes, were on social media. They were released before the trial. And he believes, and probably correctly, because I don't know who else could have released them, that the prosecution released those tapes. And by releasing those tapes, they made him a snitch publicly, and his life wasn't worth two cents. And we'll talk later about some uh, cross, we're not going to play all the cross, but some cross that had specifically to do with the fact of, of how he lives his life because of that. All right. Thank you. The caller has hung up. Thank you for using Securus. Good. Mr. Copeland, would you mind telling the jury, um, the person you're speaking with, who that is in relation to you? First off, this I'm, is Brian uh, Steele, Young Thug's lawyer, cross-examining him. Yeah, could I stop for just a second? Sure. To, so that to, to lay the groundwork, what this is. Sure. These are telephone calls recorded from the jail. These are calls he made to friends and family from the jail. When these calls start, there is a recording on their call saying, this is a call from the whatever jail he was in, uh, and it's being recorded. So these were all recorded calls. The defense received, as part of discovery, every telephone call he made while he was in jail, went through those telephone calls, and are playing those telephone calls for the jury. And they just played some clips of the calls, and now uh, he's being cross-examined on what he said on that telephone call to his, this one I think is to his sister, I'm not sure. My sister. Okay. And did you hear, and I'm going to ask uh, the court, I'm going to replay it, but did you hear there, um, December, should be December 21, 2022, during this conversation with your sister that you mentioned that you lied on thug? Did you hear that in there? Yes. Can you play Mr. Kokomo at 321? Um, and I'll tell you when to stop and then you announce the time, okay? <clears throat> I ain't got nothing to do with no murder. Everybody, and I did it. I ain't got nothing to do with it. I lied on Doug because, you know what I mean, I find out he, 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 I can't say that, I ain't, I can't say that on the phone, but, you know what I mean? It's some shit, it's some shit happened between me and him back then. And it just so happened, I got locked up the next day. You feel me? Mm -hmm. So he said, I lied on Thug, but then he started to say something else, that I can't say that on the phone, so he knows this stuff is being recorded and will be used later. All right, I'm going to jump ahead. I know you ain't. You be saying that. Why keep up his mic? Okay. The caller has hung up. Mr. Copeland and Jeffrey Williams, 250B, as in Barry, did you hear, and it's at the 410 mark starting, you said that you didn't think that this SHI, I'm just not saying the word, blank, was going that to go that far and that they, meaning the prosecution, the police, knew that you were BSing. Did you hear you say that? Yes. 
I want to ask you also, did you hear in this February 19, 2023 recorded call? And by the way, tell the jurors who you're speaking with in relation to you. Uh, a friend. Um, did you hear you discuss and you say that um, this is crazy? You tried to talk your way out of it. It didn't work. Um, your friend says that that's the problem is that you talk too much and that you need to be quiet. She says it a different term. And um, you ask, you, you say that doesn't your friend realize that you're kicking yourself in the backside or ASS for that? Did you hear that? Yes. And that um, you're sitting in jail. There's only one reason that they will let you out, meaning the police and the prosecutor. Is that who you're referring to? Yes. And uh, you said what's done is done. You can't take it back. Did you hear you say something to that effect? Yes. Okay. Did you hear on this recorded call that you said that they didn't put anybody else out there but you? They are trying to make it seem like it's you and Thug. You said that when they came to see you, when they came to see you, they asked about it. You just wanted to know why you weren't going to court. You don't know anything about anybody else. You said you made, you told the police and the prosecutors, you made all of this SHI blank up to try to finesse your way out of jail. Did you hear something to that effect? Yes. And who is the person, when you said they, when they came to see you, who are you referring to? Them two right there. And when you say them two, the two prosecutors sitting at the front table before the Honorable Judge Whitaker? Yes. Ms. Hilton? Huh? Ms. Hilton? And Ms. Love. Okay. And did you tell them back in 2023 that what you said previously was to finesse your way out of jail and it's untrue? Yes. Did you make that clear? It is kind of crazy because like we always worry about as criminal defense lawyers putting a witness up that we know is going to lie. We would never do that. We always talk about it even when it's our own witness or a family member of a, or our own client, a family member of our client, somebody trying to help our client. You know, we're always like, no, we can't do that. We just saw recently a defendant testify in narrative form, yet the prosecutors have no problem and it's an open court under oath that all this guy does is lie and they still put him on the stand to lie. It seems crazy to me that there aren't more repercussions for this. Well, they not only put him on the stand to lie, they give him immunity. Um, and, and you're, you're going to hear some other benefits that he got too, which we can't do. We can't Not say sure. yeah, immunity, go ahead and lie. It's crazy. Yes. Did they come visit you at the Fayette County jail? Yes. Did you hear on this recording? You then said that they ended the interview and left because it wasn't because you weren't doing what they wanted to hear. Did you hear that? Yes. And you're talking same as two prosecutors that sit before the jury every day? Yes. Did you hear yourself say that you thought that they would believe what you said back in 2015 and let you go, but it didn't work? Did you hear something to that effect? Yes. Who is the they? Who are you When you say, I thought that they would believe what I said and let you go, who are you referring to? The police. Okay. The gang unit. And the jurors know who they are, but the same people that's been on the videos. Yes. And Detective Thorpe, I assume, if I'm wrong. Yes. Say. Okay. And, and uh, Agent Cunningham. Yes. Okay. Did you hear, and this is at 1750 start time on the same um, Jeffrey Williams, 250 B as in Barry. Did you hear you say that um, you have effed up, you have an effed up way of thinking. You think that you have all the sense, but you don't have any. Your friend agrees. You say you had an effed up way of thinking. You thought that if you lied on that MF, I'm not saying the word, but MF, they wouldn't touch him or do anything. Do you remember hearing that? Yes. Who is the MF you're referring to? If you lied on the MF, who are you pointing at? Thug. Thug, okay. And you made that clear to these prosecutors and the police? Yes. You mentioned in the last uh, recording that the jurors heard as well as this recording, there was a lot of talk about a video. Do you know what I'm referring to? It's a lot of talk yes. about the video getting attention. Do you know what I'm referring to? Yes. Tell the jurors what you are referring to on your calls that we just heard. The interrogation video. And was it one of the ones that we saw or the jurors saw in this courtroom before the Honorable Judge Whitaker? Uh, yes. And when you say, when you're talking and, and your friend is saying, you know, people are talking about it, you heard all those conversations, right? Yes. Board. Do you know who, who put that video on the, the internet during this, before this trial started? I don't know who did it. Do you have a belief who did it? Yes. And who are you referring to who did that? Objection. 
relevant to who he believes. It goes to his state of mind. Speculation. It goes to his state of mind on the conversations that he's referring to. It puts it in context. I love it. Who who did you believe put out the videos on the internet of your interrogation or the video? The state. And by the state, the same people you've been referring to. I can't say specific if it was them, but the state did it. Okay. And so that's the part you were talking about before is that he thinks the state leaked that video, makes his life harder, more pressure on him. He has nobody to turn to now, no friends on the outside. He's got to look to the state, more pressure, give them what they want, testify how they want, get protection from them. All right. There, there's no reason to release that tape other than that. What did that have an effect on you or your family when you believe the state of Georgia put out your interrogation? Well, they, they believe I'd be, um, if everybody say I'm a snitch, you know, this man third, they believe that I'd be like, okay, and just do what they want me to do. And is that, there's a mention in the last recording that um, your friend was saying, or your sister, we're getting a lawyer, they put us in harm's way. Was that a lawyer for what? Uh, to go out to the state? For putting that video out? Yes. Okay. To see who put it up. Okay. I'd like to go to... Um... Would this be a good time for a break? Sure. Okay. Let's take a bathroom break. All right. So anything else you want to add to that? No, it just did. And again, it will come up and I'll bring it as to what specifically he had to do because of them releasing that tape. That it did change, really change his life for the worse. Is that coming later, you're saying? You want to talk about it well, now? Well, no. It, what happens is when... What's the guy named Shide, the the other cross, the other lawyer that cross sure. examines. Uh, when he does his cross, I didn't put his whole cross. I didn't, but we, I left out this part. But he cross examines him on how he lives his daily life, what things he has to do to make sure he doesn't get shot, mm. uh, and he goes into the that. Talk because of that video, right? I don't know if I'd say that, but well, maybe, because maybe, of life, maybe, maybe contributed to it, but right. All right, here's the next clip. What? Yeah, that. Oh, that's it. Fifteen months. That's yeah, like, it seemed like longer than that. What? Nah, because I did fourteen months. Got out for three months, and then now been locked up sixteen months. You have one minute left. Hey. Yeah. Hey. Yeah, yeah. Damn, right, shit right. be so crazy. Sometimes they don't even let my calls go through. I be calling. I be calling home. Got them. Be one of my sisters. They'll be here. Yeah. Then they find pick up oh, okay. the phone. I see only one call. Don't came through. I be like, man, wait. Well, yeah. Yeah. Shit, I'm about to go to the damn game tonight, man. I'm going to go to this game and that damn shit. Kick back with my old lady or something later on. She want to go out to this little seafood spot. You feel me? Yeah. But look, they got them. Um, well, shit, when I come out, I'm going to tell her to check because when I tell her to call, every time she kick over, All right. All right, bet. All right. All right, I got you. All right, you too. All right, my kids. We heard besides your voice on the uh, recording. My sister and a friend. Okay. And the friend this time is a man. Sound like a man's voice. Is that accurate? Yes. Did you hear um, you s explain that um, you've made people mad and that they feel like you, you feel like you made them shake their tail when you first got locked up? They offered you a year in jail. You turned them down. And now your lawyer has told them not to contact you at all. And then all of a sudden, the uh, video of the interrogation pops up. Do you remember hearing that? I said, chase their tail. Chase their tail. Okay. And who are the they that you're talking about when you say you think you made them mad? Say that again? Who is the they? Who is they when you say you think that you made them mad or chase their tail? Who are the you police. Talking? And then at 10.05 on JW250D, as in David, did you hear yourself say that um, people failed to realize that if you look up at what was said, nobody was charged with what you said? Do you remember hearing that? Yes. What were you uh, referring to on that? The 2015 interrogation. And it's now 20, It's now uh, February 21, 2023? <laughs> Did you? No. Uh, when this call was made, February 21, oh. 2023, so a year yeah. and a half ago, maybe. Is that what you're referring to? That the, the, call? the length of time? Yes. Okay. And then do you remember hearing the same statement at the 10.05 that you would you would say anything? Your main thing was you were saying thug and was trying to 
to let you go, trying to get them to let you go. And you said that if you would let go, you were out of there, but they weren't going for it. Do you remember hearing that? Yes. Do you remember a little later, you said that um, it is crazy that people don't pay attention. If you wanted to tell, you could have easily told if you had something to tell. You remember hearing that? Yes. Do you remember hearing at 1720 that um, you explained that you told them people that they're wasting their time and the lady acted like she wanted to get on her knees and beg and plead. You said you told them to get out of your face and then the man asked which lady, do you remember that? Me love. And then you said on the recording, the deputy DA, that's who you just pointed to? Ms. Love. And you said you told them, Miss Love, that you made it all up trying to talk your way out of jail. Is that what you said on the recording? Ms. Love. You told her that? Yes. Back in February 21 of 2023 and before that. When she can't see me. At the That's got to look bad in front of a jury. It's like, this is a witness you called. He told you he was going to lie. Told you he specifically lied on Thug. Told you he has no information. He's saying whatever he can to get out of it. And they still call him as a witness. And they don't, and they don't care. It's crazy, right? I mean, yeah, this like, you know, feels like. And this is good evidence because he's not, he's talking to a buddy. I mean, it's, it's not like he's there you know, trying to you know, fashion testimony a certain way. This is him having a conversation with a buddy. I mean, it's hard to impeach that. Yeah. Well, and it's, it's a smart way of asking questions as the defense. Cause it doesn't look like he's working with the defense or the defense pressured him to do anything. He is of his own volition talking to his buddy. But to me, it's becoming a situation where the defense is going to try to prove corruption in the state attorney's office. And that's how they're going to try to win this case. I mean, that that's what it's starting to feel like. Do do? And then you, she wouldn't leave. And you said, what does she want you to say? Do you remember saying that? Huh? You asked her, meaning district attorney, love, what does she want you to say? Remember hearing that? Yes. And then you said that they asked about how it was growing up. And you said, I didn't grow up with them. You're from a whole different neighborhood. Did you hear that? Yes. And you told Deputy District Attorney Love, that she and the others are wasting their time. Yes. Who else was with Ms. Love? Ms. Hilton and the, the big guy, uh, the, big, the big investigator, I can't think of his name right now, uh, Long. Investigator Long, the district attorney's office? Yeah, I think it might be his name, okay. but the big, the big police, the, the, whatever he is. Okay. And you told Miss Love, Miss Hilton, and who you believe is now the the thing the state can use is he's definitely trying to answer their questions. He's not being nearly as evasive, and now we're supposed to believe him that he's telling the truth now. But they called him. That's the problem. They, they called him, and although we didn't pay the whole thing, he does give them the uh, I don't know or I can't remember answers to the defense too. He sure. does do that to them too. It doesn't seem like it's quite as much as all I'm saying. Investigator or a police officer long to go find someone else that they're wasting their time. Did you hear that on the recording? Yes. And that did happen? Yes. Yeah. But, but see the difference, in the, the difference in the cross here. They're not asking him about his memory. They're right. asking him if he heard on that recording that they played for him, just played for him in open court. Did he hear himself say this? It's a really they're smart way to remember. ask questions. What? To, it's a smart way to ask questions. It is. It's a witness like this. The door that she opened the door three times, like you were going to change your mind. Who are you referring to? Miss Love. And when you say open the door, just tell the jurors, like, what kind of room are you in? Uh, this is my room. Um, were you allowed to go in and out of the room on your own? I was in jail. So who was going in and out of the room like three times opening the door? Who no, she wasn't going in and out. She, they were leaving. I was complaining about my court. Every time I had to go to court, they weren't coming to get me to take me to court. So they kept holding me in jail and I'll miss my court and they'd give me another court date, another month, like a month away. So she was asking me who my lawyer was, that she was gonna reach out to my lawyer and try to get them to get me in court. So if I was if they were to help me get in court, would I cooperate? I said, get me in court and we'll see. You wanted to get out of jail? Yes. All right. So the next clip we're gonna jump to is we're gonna show a little bit of Weinstein's cross. Um just to it's see short. how. 
What? It's it's short yeah, to the it's point. A couple minutes, and it's interesting because one of the reasons I do want to play it too is he literally posted on Twitter for people to post questions they want him to ask and said he was nervous, but you know, he did his best or whatever and cross-examining him. I thought it was kind of funny to see that on Twitter. But yeah, he was asking, what is the Twitter's verse? What does the world want to hear from Woody? Um, and we'll we'll listen to a couple of his questions now. I'm Diamante Kendricks, attorney. I know you weren't feeling well yesterday. How are you? I'm not going to ask you a lot of questions about years ago because it's been about nine years. I can't remember what I had for lunch yesterday. Mm -hmm. um, but I will ask you a few. So let's talk about nine years ago. You've stated repeatedly that you would tell the police anything to stay at a jail, right? Mm, yes. You said yesterday, tell me if you remember this. You said yesterday, quote, Rice Street is not prisoner jail. I don't know what that place is. It's the worst place in the world. Do you remember saying that? It is. Why do you say that? Because it's the worst place in the world. <laughs> that I don't get to. Okay. So let's talk about finessing the police. Okay. I think you, uh, you've you heard the word, I'm just going to say it once. You've heard the word bullshit a bunch in the past couple of days. Right. So we'll, we'll just say BS. Is that basically what you were telling the police? BS? Yes. So are you... You're a bullshit artist. You're a BS artist. At as the you time. can see. I'm sorry. I said, as you can see. Okay. Or at least you were several years ago, correct? And I told him that. Okay. Um, and you would stay at a jail to help yourself because you didn't want to be in there, correct? Right. And you wanted to stay at a jail to help your family, your girlfriend, your daughter, correct? To protect them. To protect them. Yes. Okay. And again, you'd say anything to stay at a jail so you could protect them. Um, so when you said that you heard things from Mr. Garlington, from Lil D about what they, th them guys shot thug, that was a lie, correct? It was. And about Yak being a driver, that was a lie, correct? It was. Um, when you would tell these lies, I think you testified earlier that what you would do is sprinkle in like a few grains of truth in the lie. Is that correct? It's the only way you can be convincing. Can you can you explain to the jury that technique that you would use? All right. Uh, <sighs> you you hear you hear stuff. You know what's true, and you know what you know it's not true. So you take this right here and put it with that right there. And, and you would have you finished your answer? Yeah. Okay. Which one? Go into details. Well, no, I think that's a good description. Unless you want to go into more detail, you're free to do that. I'm saying I'm trying to get out of here, so I don't want. To... Yeah, I don't want to keep you too much longer either. So he's like, "Nah, I, as quick as we can do this is as good as possible." So that's some of the questions Weinstein got to. Um, anything you want to add to that? Uh, no, no. It, it just he was he was he had one one point to make. He made it, and that was it. And then we get to Shart, who tried to show him. A uh, a prison uniform or whatever that he was going to try to get him. They objected. Judge didn't let him do it for some theatrics. But uh, we're going to hear him argue, hear them argue about some of the stuff he wants to ask Woody, and then we're going to listen to about ten or fifteen minutes of his cross on Woody. I think it's DS twenty seven A, which is a warrant for a false report of a crime. Uh, Mr. Copeland was never convicted. Matter of fact, I think that case was actually dismissed. And so I'm not sure the relevancy of the warrant that. This is a different warrant than he was presented with before. Yeah, this is, this is different from the murder, murder warrant. Murder. Yes. I can, Your Honor, I can hand up to the court. My copy. Okay. Um, and there's two warrants, actually, one for false report of a crime and then one for false statements, both of which were um, dismissed by the state. So, Your Honor, mm -hmm. this warrant. Um, was from 2021. Mm -hmm. um, it was pending in the DA's office until earlier this year. It's been pending while this trial is going on. Uh, the DA's office, I believe, uh, I believe it says January 18th of 2024. No prost, it, or they said declined to prosecute. I, I believe that's the third document. Yeah. Um, I'll point out a couple of things. First of all, the reason for the decline to prosecute is prosecutorial discretion, not a hole in the evidence. Also, that decline to prosecute says that this case can be 
it says at this time, the state declines to prosecute, meaning can be brought up in the future. And quite simply, Your Honor, the state cannot, it's, it's clear under the law that pending cases against a witness are bias and motive. Mm -hmm. uh, the state cannot evade the reality of pending cases by just simply dismissing cases against their witnesses before they testify. Mm -hmm. They can try and they have tried and they will try, but he eventually is allowed to use this. But this is what the argument's over is the state charged him with a certain crime. They pulled it away to try to make it seem like they have less leverage on Woody. And the defense attorneys are like, no, 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 no. We still get to ask him that question. And so they, but they didn't pull it away case, right away. What? Say that again. They didn't pull it away right away. They, they pulled it away during the course of the trial. Mm -hmm. You know, not, you know, it wasn't like they, they pulled it away before the trial started. It was pending during this trial. I believe Mr. Copeland, I wasn't planning on introducing any evidence, but Mr. Copeland gave a interview to the Danza Project where he, he seems to be under the impression that the case is still pending as of that interview. So I don't even know if he's aware about the declination of prosecution. Okay. When was that interview? About recently, like okay. recently. Recent. The last couple of months or I think couple of weeks. Last few okay. weeks. Yeah. All right. That seems relevant. I agree. And then that's why that it seems relevant. We just don't think he can go into the warrants. He can say he did, was he arrested for a false report of a crime and was the case declined, but I'm not sure if he intends to show him the warrants of his arrest. Was he arrested? He was. He was arrested, and then the case was dismissed. Three years later. Well, it, just to be clear, was he, he was in jail. The false report yeah. of a crime is he accused a jail guard of using OC spray on him. And we're going to hear this. We'll, we'll just skip ahead to now when they yeah. ask these questions to um, Woody himself later on in the cross. A and DS 27. Go ahead. Your Honor, may I approach you? May. DS 27 A and DS 27 B. Yes. Mr. Copeland, could you just look at those two documents? Do you recognize those documents? I've seen them before, yeah. Are those the arrest warrants taken out for you for false report of a crime and false statements? Um, that you believe are still pending against you? Uh, yeah. Okay. And that's, that's important. Briefly. He thinks they're still pending. Which, which, so even though the state tried to strategically, legally, technically remove the pressure, the pressure's actually still there because the, the witness still thinks it's there. And why wouldn't they tell him they dropped the charges? What reason do they have for not telling him? It's like they were trying to use it as a sword and shield, right? They were right. trying to keep the pressure on him, but make the defense lawyers think that they couldn't ask him these questions. The allegation is that, well, Your Honor, I would move to admit DS 27A and DS 27B into evidence. Your Honor, we object to the admission of those exhibits. We ask the question of exhibits. They're admitted over objection. Mr. Copeland, briefly, the allegations against you that you believe are pending are that you accused a jail worker or a deputy of spraying with OC spray at the jail, right? And the deputies, the supervisors reviewed the videotape from the jail and determined that the jail worker did not have OC spray on her and did not spray you with any OC spray in the jail. Isn't that correct? Right. Did you know that the state, while this trial was going on, dismissed that case against you? I didn't know that. Well, I brought you good news. May I approach with 27C? You may. I think. Okay. Um, that document indicates I approach. Does correct me if I'm wrong. Does this document say the facts of this case have been reviewed 
And although it appears that probable cause existed for the defendant's arrest, the decision of the district attorney at this time is not to prosecute the above named defendant. Is that what that says? Yeah. Okay. It says the reasons for this decision are as follows. Prosecutorial discretion. Correct. Mm -hmm. And yes. the person who his name is on this document is Fani T. Willis, correct? Yes. Okay. That document does not indicate that your charges, your pending charges for false report of a crime and false statement, they don't indicate that those are dismissed forever, just for now, at this time, correct? I guess. Okay. And it, nothing in that document says we dismiss this case because we were wrong. Mr. Copeland's innocent. It said prosecutorial discretion, correct? What do you mean? Okay. It means that's the point, right? He doesn't even know what that means. He doesn't know if it helps him or hurts him or what. But they just know, made they're, they're, this is so wrong on so many levels. First off, the prosecution is with, withdrawing it, hoping the defense will not be able to cross examine him on a case that's been dismissed or null pros. number one. Number two, they don't tell him that they've dropped the charges so that he is still under the pressure that he has pending charges against him that they could put him in prison for. Number three, this case was made because they had a video proving that he was just a bold-faced liar, that there was no pepper spray even on the officer, yet they're willing to put this guy on the stand a guy who they know is a perpetual liar. They know that he's a liar because they have video showing he lied and that they charge him with lying. And yet they're still willing to put this guy on the stand as a witness. It's crazy. That's incredible. It's so wild. I just, I don't understand how like nothing happens to them as they continue to do things like this in this case. Yeah, no now, discipline within their office. I mean, nothing. I just, I mean, I don't even know what the right answer is because I, I don't feel like I can have any confidence that they've proven this case legitimately. Well, it, we don't have it on tape because it's such a short little clip, but the judge actually made a comment during one of the hearings saying when they said about him being a prosecution witness, she actually says, I don't know what good he did you. I mean, exactly. She, she, I she don't get actually, it. Well, I she actually to, says that they had to call him for some of the crimes, I guess, but I just, I don't see how it helped. I honestly don't do it. All right. That, that we can strike that part. Ask your next question. Oh, by the way, she's, she is pushing this case. Isn't it true? And you just found out that this was dismissed today, but isn't it true that while you we're on the state's witness list to testify in this case. The state was simultaneously at the same time prosecuting you for false statements and false report of a crime. I like that question. It's a good question. Mm -hmm. And then it gets even better because the witness asked him to say it how I understand it. Isn't that true? Talk to me so I can understand. They were calling you a liar at the same time that they were asking this jury to believe what you're saying. Isn't that true? Oh, yeah. Good question. Let's talk about your immunity agreement with the state. They told you in that June 10th, 2024 meeting that you did not ask for that any crime that you talked about, they were not going to prosecute you for. Correct. Yeah, you can sh talk about shooting Rich Homie Kwan's dad's barber shop. You can talk about shooting Rich Homie Kwan's father. They're not going to prosecute you for those things, right? That's yeah. what they told you. That's the promise they made to you, correct? Objection to characterization of the evidence sustained. Is that your understanding? Nothing that's taking to use against me. Okay. There's one exception. If I say that I did, yeah. Okay. The Donovan Thomas thing. Yes. Mr. Copeland, you don't you think how this came out with the whole Donovan Thomas thing 
Do you think that was clear to the jury what they were trying to get across that maybe it was him or some people connected to him and not anybody sitting in that courtroom? I think when he finishes, I think he kind of does a, a summation at the end of this cross here. We're going to watch where I think it's obvious he's saying you're the one that killed him. Okay. I don't know any of these gentlemen back here to have a personal beef with Donovan Thomas, do you? What do you mean? Back in 2015, you didn't know any of these gentlemen to have a personal beef with Donovan Thomas. I never said I did. Okay. The reality, Mr. Copeland, is you were the person who had a problem with Donovan Thomas. Isn't that correct? You were the one that broke into Donovan Thomas's car, correct? So my facts not in evidence. Never ruled. You've admitted to it. You're the one that stole Donovan Thomas's chain, correct? Ms. Copeland, you're the one literally no answers coming, but he just keeps asking questions. One that shot up Donovan Thomas's friend, Rich Homie Kwan's father's barbershop in 2014, correct? You're the one that was going back and forth with Donovan Thomas's brother. Kelvin Watts, correct? You've called his brother a waste of space in October 2021, didn't you? Mr. Copeland's not answering the question. So yeah, uh, apparently response. Mr. Shard doesn't care whether he answers or not. So it's fine <laughs> with me. I mean, if he too. wants an answer, he can say that. You called Kelvin Watts a waste of space in October 2021, didn't you? And I don't think nobody walking earth would not agree with it. <laughs> you said that people said, would... I don't think anybody walking the earth would disagree with that. Cheer if he, dies. he definitely stands by that one. Correct? I will. Back in the days. You've shot it, Donovan Thomas's brother, Kelvin Watts, correct? <laughs> You're the one who got jumped by Donovan Thomas's brother on January 6, 2015 at Club Crucial, correct? You, not any of these gentlemen. Right? And you're the one that shot up TIG recording studio on January 8th, 2015. Isn't that correct? Let me ask you something, Mr. Copeland. You were asked about the green store by attorney Steele, right? The green store, you're familiar? Yeah. That's actually called Mommy's Grocery in Delhi on Glen Street, correct? I guess. You estimated that the driving time is five minutes. The truth is to get from the green store to where Donovan Thomas was gunned down, you have to drive a couple hundred feet on Glen Street and take a right onto McDaniel, correct? That's how you get there, right over the tracks. The truth is it takes less than a minute to make that drive, isn't that correct? Mr. Kokomo, could you play publish DS24F? And this is February 21st, 2015, 378 Yankee Delta from 622.59 to 624.01. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't know his name. He called tonight. Well, I got with him. I got killed with And. We're going to start it over, Mr. Copeland, because I didn't I didn't provide any context. You spoke on a, a gang meeting that the Bloods had about you on that Thursday before Donovan Thomas was killed, correct? Mr. Kokomo, could you play DS twenty? I got somebody's only name. I got somebody's only name. He said he killed him. He called tonight. Well, I got with him. I forgot what they know I killed, but it was a Friday night. They had murder Thursday night. Mm -hmm. They had a vodka. They had a vodka just about, it was, it was bloody. Everything bloody. Mm -hmm. Then the old meeting was basically funny. They was all in there talking about this and this, talking about this and this. So the nigga Mo was on the phone. So Mo told everybody. All I need, every last one of y'all, whoever, 90s, 
Expressville, whoever that was nickname, mm-hmm. supposed to kill me. They gonna get, they gave all them guns. The same night they gave them all guns. Say said, treat me to a gas station and kill me. Uh, um, I forgot what else. But he called and get, he told me everything. He said, is this person in front of yours? The Bloods had a gang meeting on the Thursday before Donovan Thomas was killed, two days before, on the same day that you shot up TIG Studios. Isn't that correct? I don't know what you're talking about. In that statement to the police, you said that the whole meeting was based on me. Not them, on you. That Mo from behind the wall had put the green light on you. Not anyone else. He put the green light on you for what was going on with you. The guy who stole from Donovan Thomas. The guy who shot up the studio with Rich Homie Kwan and Donovan Thomas in the studio that night. Yeah, objection. I was assuming facts not in the evidence and harassment of the witness. Have a rule. You've told the police. At that meeting, Donovan Thomas. I think he's been pretty clear about which side he thinks is harassing him. Yeah. Whoop. Approved of the orders. Is he smirking? I can't really tell. To kill you. You told the police that the gang members handed out guns to younger people. And the plan was to trick you to come to the gas station. And the only reason you were killed is because someone told you about it. In January 2015, Donovan Thomas was coming after you. Objection, speculation, again, assuming effects not in evidence. Sustained. Mr. Copeland, you're not the type of guy to back down, are you? No further questions. All right. It's pretty good. See, I think it's clear that he was saying he killed that guy. (laughs) That's pretty good. I mean, that's pretty good prosecution work right there by the defense. Yeah. And you could see some of the lawyers were really nice to Copeland. Um, they were all respectful, but Shart, I think was the one that went in the hardest to really try to prove that. And that's the only reason they called Copeland is basically with that. Not the only reason, but one of the main reasons the prosecution called him was to get the evidence about that particular crime. And then now they're turning around and pointing the finger at Copeland. He's not really denying it. And so like, if he's the only reason they're going to prove it's the other people, but the, the defense made a pretty good argument that it was actually him. That sounds like reasonable doubt. Well, the other thing too is why that again, this is a strategy call. The defense lawyers got together. The reason that he was the guy that went after him was because he knew nothing about his client. Right. So, so if he got mad at That's this smart. lawyer, he couldn't say anything. Steel, different story. He knows a lot about thug. So Steele's nice to him, respectful, yeah. you know, repeats what he said on the telephone, and that's it, because he didn't want him going after Thud. But this guy, it was safe for him to go after him because he knew nothing about his client. Well, and I think when it comes down to it, he supposedly knows some things about Thug, but he basically admitted that most of those things were lies. But, I mean, it was, it was really interesting. I think it was actually shorter than I thought it was going to be. It was, what, two or three days. But I think the defense was careful enough I think they got what they needed to, you know, and, and some people are surprised they didn't go into the ex parte meeting and, you know, ask two days of questions over that. That's usually how it is that it doesn't ever seem to be as big of a deal as it was in the months that it felt like we took dealing with it in the outside world, but getting Glanville out was one of the main parts of the ex parte. They would have liked to get the DAs out because of the ex parte um, hearing, but not a ton actually coming from, uh, Woody from the ex parte hearing, but he gave them enough and they confirmed enough of what they needed. Well, the judge gave them an admonition. Uh, again, we didn't, we didn't play the admonition, but he gave, she gave him an admonition. This trial is not about judge Glanville. Mm-hmm. This trial is not about the ex parte hearing. And this trial is not about the prosecutors in Copeland. It's about whether or not the state can prove their case beyond a reasonable doubt towards your clients. Mm-hmm. So, one is she she pretty much told them, you know, be careful how far afield you go. I want to stop you. Secondly, she's repeatedly cut these lawyers off both sides and said, you know, we've already covered that. Move on. You know, go somewhere else. Don't waste our time going over the same ground twice. 
So she's pushing this case for completion uh, and she's holding everybody's feet to the fire equally, which is which is good. <laughs> I mean, she's equal, you know, doing it to both sides. If you notice, she sustained a lot of defense ob uh, objections. She overruled a lot of prosecutors' objections. So the prosecutors were trying to limit that evidence and she was letting it all come in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So what are your overall thoughts about Woody's direct, his cross? Um, who did he benefit more? Why? And any, how do you feel about the case now after he's, after the defense has gotten to take their shots? Well, here's the problem in, in from prior videos. when we talked about that person, uh, the other person who's running for a district attorney yeah. and how she said she would drop this case. We've only talked about Woody. Woody is worthless. Woody, if, if they're going to prove their case, they better have worthless a good case. To the state, you mean. What? As a witness. You mean worthless to the state as a witness? Yes. Okay. Just, I mean, he has no value to this conviction. So if they're going to prove a conviction, they've got to prove it by other evidence other than Woody. Woody is has no value toward guilt or innocence in this case. Uh, they might as well he might as well have not even shown up. Yeah, I don't I don't disagree. I think it's it's a tough look for the prosecution as Woody was such a central part and probably one of the big parts that. Um, the jury is going to remember at this point because there are so many issues with timing and delays and what evidence are they going to remember? What are they not? What are they told to forget about? Did they actually forget about that? You know, all of that stuff just doesn't make a ton of sense to me of how the jury is supposed to deal with that. But we'll see at the end of the day, what ends up ruling the day. I'm sure these jurors are going to give interviews. We also didn't really talk about a bunch of the jurors are having issues with timing, yes. with money, with the delay of the trial. Um, what do you think if, if they lose out enough jurors, which I don't think the judge is going to let them go easily, but if they lose enough jurors, how good is the defense's argument that all this was attributable to the state? And if there is a mistrial because they lose jurors because of the delays and how long it took and how long the state said the case is going to take and then how long it's actually taken because of their actions, uh, what are the chances you think of a pretty good um, motion to uh, dismiss based on double jeopardy because the state forced the mistrial with their bad acts? Well, that's tough to answer. I would say in a normal trial, it's 99% they're not going to blame the state for the delays. This is right. not a normal trial. Right, um, exactly. So I think that you might have some unusual law coming out of an appeal in this case mm -hmm. because we have such unusual facts and unusual circumstances. So I, I wouldn't count it out that some appellate court is not going to look at this and say, we're blaming the state for all these problems and all these delays. Yeah. The yeah. defense is objecting to everything. Uh, you know, all juror, you know, whenever they talk about a juror being excused or anything, all this, the defense is objecting all of it to preserve their appeal. Yeah, for sure. As they should, as they should. Um, well, that's all we got. Thanks for joining us for this video tonight. Hit that like button if you guys have not already. Till next time, we're out of here. Thanks for watching another episode of The Lawyer You Know. If you enjoyed the episode, please hit the thumbs up and share with your friends who may be interested here on YouTube. And don't forget to subscribe. You can also follow us on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and TikTok. And don't forget to check out The Lawyer You Know podcast with new seasons dropping every quarter. If you have a case you want to talk to us about, if it's a personal injury case, wrongful death, catastrophic injury, car accident, or slip and fall case, please email us at lawyeryouknow at gmail.com. And of course, all these links I just mentioned are included in the description below on this episode and every episode. So until next time, this is Peter Tregos, The Lawyer You Know.